Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with plenty of Thrones of Britannia gameplay to show off. I've got three videos coming out in quick succession, hoping to show you as much as I can from this early access build that Creative Assembly allowed me the joy and honor of playing. There are two sets of campaign videos and one siege battle, links to which you can find in the description below. Just a heads up that this is still a beta build, so things aren't final or fully polished just yet. Another heads up, I am trying my best to learn how to properly pronounce things from this part of the world. I'm not yet very good at it, so I apologize for butchering pronunciations, and I welcome any tips in the comments below. With that said, and a big thanks to Creative Assembly, let's get started. This video shows some gameplay as the Vikings of Northumbria. Over the first 50 or so turns of this campaign, I had to deal with severe loyalty issues in my faction, and a war with a northern English kingdom early on resulted in some serious trouble for me. As Northumbria, you have to balance the happiness of your Norse and English subjects, and looting, sacking, raiding, and killing Englishmen made for some pretty unhappy locals. So, I'm forced south to declare war on other Viking factions, while to the north, some Gallic factions declare war on me as well. We pick up on this gameplay with me taking Kester with an auto-resolved siege battle, assisted by a faction I have no ties with other than a mutual hatred of Hellerborg, the Viking faction holding the city. After winning, I have the option of subjugating the faction as a vassal since this is their last settlement, but instead I decide to sack it for the money. This act of aggression towards oppressors of the English seems to have made the English happier with me. And up here you can see that my army loves me, though I still have some work to do to improve relations with the English. So we move in and we occupy Kester, and that finally fixes the relations I have with these Englishmen. Unfortunately, that can very quickly drop when at war with an English kingdom, so I must still focus on my efforts on a Norse foe. Quickly repairing some buildings and then looking into leveling up my general, Idrid already has a priest to keep him loyal, a bard to increase zeal which affects morale in combat and public order in the region he's in, and a quartermaster that lets him move farther per turn and increases his army supplies. Next up for him is a forager to increase replenishment rates and food production in the province he's in. Within the next turn or so, one of the Gallic kingdoms asks for peace. Wanting to reduce the strain of fighting on two fronts, I accept their request for peace, though at a small cost. Now I can focus to the south, though I'm still at war with two factions to the north, Stratkrut and Sudreyar. Over the next few turns, I bring two of my three armies down to the southeast, while one remains to the north. Meanwhile, a marriage offer comes around, allowing me to get my heir a wife who will increase some important stats, so I allow them to marry and continue on towards my upcoming target, Helerborg. I quickly check to see if they have any allies, and I give them a chance to become a vassal without any bloodshed. They say no, so I continue moving in. I also upgrade the blacksmith at Setretha, allowing me to get higher tier armor and weapons for my troops. For now, I'm able to get my troops in the north up to silver level armor and weapons, just to give them a slight stat boost. A few turns later, my southern forces are getting into position, while up north I spotted a fleet coming in with troops from Stratklut, and so I send the Fury of Tyr in to Girum to protect it from the threat. I'm a bit short on troops, so I decide to recruit a few more units at the cost of my already dwindling food supply. However, I figure I'm about to capture some new territory to the south, and we're likely to get some new farms in the process. I also have some upgrades to existing food producing buildings on the way, so I'm taking a gamble, but a worthwhile one. And lo and behold, another faction decides to declare war on me, brought in by Sudreyar. They're far to the north, but by sea, still a threat. So, I need to be quick with this war in the south. Troops are in position, Drayton has been taken by rebels, and there's no army in sight. My time to strike. My warriors are ready. I confirm that Hilerborg is a part of the great Viking army group of factions, so this war will help my relations with the English in my kingdom for sure. Without any defensive armies, the minor settlements fall immediately and I occupy them. My general has leveled up in doing so, and I get him a priest to keep him loyal. The 
You can see this has improved my standing with the English, but there are some subjects in my kingdom now upset because of how large my holdings are. This is extremely dangerous, as they can splinter off into separate factions and kick off a civil war. Three unhappy individuals mean three potential rebellious factions rising up, so I decide to take care of their holding envy by handing the newly captured estate to Thurbrand. And crisis averted. Looking into the only major settlement in the region, I realize that the garrison is rather small, so I decide to pull one of my armies up north while the other pushes in to surround the city, all while I try to take care of matters at home. One of my governors levels up, and while I'm tempted to get him a higher level priest to make sure he stays loyal, I ultimately give him a forager to keep friendly armies replenishing faster in the region and also help solve the food crisis. In between turns, I lost Dunkester to the enemy, and with this 20 stack coming out from the fog of war, I need to withdraw from the siege and try to deal with the threat. This 120 stack can cause me a lot of trouble by taking several defenseless minor settlements, so I have to stop it in its tracks. I'm unfortunately short of an attack from both sides, so I decide to pull back to Loitus, but it's too late for the hilariously named army, Danegeld won't save you. The enemy comes south, and I fight a manual battle that I just barely managed to win. Part of it is playing at 3 times speed here. You can see I'm trying to use the swamps behind me for some protection from rear charges, while my cavalry goes chasing after range units and my front lines try to keep the enemy back. I get pulled apart, but after about 20 minutes of fighting, we come out on top. Unfortunately, my general died in battle, and so I must select a replacement. At the same time, my ruler, Guthfrid, died of natural causes, and his army needs a new commander as well. We After cleaning up down here, a rebellion to the north sees me lose Dakor, and one to the south sees me lose Turexig. Then there is an attempted assassination that I choose to ignore, losing influence right now could lead to serious loyalty issues and civil war. I must tread lightly. Taking care of the rebellion to the south is easy enough, but to the north, I have to worry about this incoming army, so I stay put at the port city of Girum. 
Lo and behold, that was the right call as the fleet comes in right away. We push them back, slaughter the captives, and brace for more incoming enemy fleets. The rest of my playtime was spent ensuring all my subjects were happy, thwarting more assassination attempts, drowning my enemies, and fighting a pretty sweet 13-minute battle in the south that allowed me to conquer my enemies. Northumbria was a ton of fun to play, I got about 60 or so turns in, if memory serves me right, and managing loyalty and ensuring the locals and the army are both kept satisfied is an interesting dynamic. A few other attempted playthroughs saw rebellion and civil war breaking out as I tried to rule as a tyrant, and the ease with which minor settlements can be lost adds some serious weight to said rebellions. Make sure you check out my Kirken playthrough to hear me butcher Gallic words, and I also have an amphibious siege battle to share with you, both linked in the description down below. Apart from that, make sure you subscribe to this channel for a constant flow of Total War content and more. Till next time, thank you very much for watching, and cheers.